Hello everybody, uh, my name is Marko Zetz and I came all the way from Croatia today uh, to talk about uh, Arduino, marrying Arduino and RISC-V. Uh, this is a story about a toy project uh, uh, which I did with a colleague, uh, Davor Jadrijevic, who is not here. Uh, I'm a software engineer, but he did most of the software in, in this project, I did the harder part. So I assume many of you are already familiar with the Arduino, so just a brief introduction for, for those who aren't. Arduino is, an, uh, is a concept uh, of hardware and software uh, ecosystem which was launched, uh, I believe, 10 years ago by a few Italian guys uh, who built uh, chip protoboards uh, with, with uh, extremely cheap 8-bit 8 uh, 8 uh, microcontrollers and built a graphical user interface uh, for uh, making, it, making it easy to program this, uh, those guys. Uh, today, uh, stock Arduinos are uh, mostly sold in form of uh, 32-bit ARM cores, uh, but uh, th those are still quite uh, constrained uh, environments with only a few kilobytes of, uh, of memory for data, a little bit more for programs, but those are really simple chips uh, with no MMU. So uh, typically, uh, the original Arduinos are, are, were really not designed and are not supposed to run Linux or any uh, full-blown operating systems. Uh, the main attraction is, uh, of Arduino as a platform is uh, making it easy to uh, interface uh, uh, those microcontrollers to uh, various uh, peripherals for which the uh, for each set of library is provided. Uh, the language is uh, more or less C++ with certain uh, constraints. Uh, there are a lot of pre-built uh, pre libraries and the, uh, the graphical GUI is Java-based Java and underneath uh, is a toolchain uh, for various uh, processor architectures. So again, the main attraction is, is the simplicity and the, the target uh, group for this is really uh, not the uh, real engineers, but enthusiasts and kids uh, to, to get them fast path into, into getting quick results. Uh, so uh, why not uh, use this for, uh, for programming FPGAs? Uh, well, there's no reason why uh, besides uh, having to do a little work. So. Uh, to have this uh, GUI and whole concept uh, applicable for FPGAs, we need two components. We need to extend the, uh, the uh, programming, programming environment, which uh, Arduino folks have made uh, considerably easier in the last year, uh, because there's no longer a need to recompile the GUI and hack Java, uh, as the guys have been uh, really nice to provide hooks uh, for uh, embedding different architectures uh, into the, uh, the toolchain. The other thing that is uh, obviously uh, needed is a, a system on a chip platform, uh, which is a, a, in another part which was done in-house. So we have a toolchain and, uh, and an FPGA core, which uh, can be uh, programmed with the toolchain. Uh, the main attraction of this is that uh, uh, we've managed to uh, pre-compile uh, the toolchain for uh, OS X, Windows, Linux. Uh, I mostly use free, FreeBSD, but Arduino doesn't uh, work well on FreeBSD. Uh, we didn't port the new lib. The, this, is, this seems to be the most problematic uh, uh, thing to cross-compile on OS X and Windows. Uh, but rather ju uh, just compiled the, the toolchain and uh, piled up a few uh, libraries, uh, mo mostly borrowed from FreeBSD and some other projects. Uh, what we have uh, provided uh, 
locally is just a small uh, set of startup routines which set up the C runtime environment and then, uh, well, jump to whatever uh, Arduino sp uh, spits out. Uh, so uh, this is really not a rocket science. We have uh, uh, Arduino, we ha can, can think about Arduino as an alternative way of uh, uh, specifying uh, the, the, the compile uh, rules uh, as opposed to make files. So Arduino provides a platform text uh, uh, part which, uh, which uh, specifies the rules for compiling linking. Uh, and uh, here we leverage the, uh, the option of uh, for JCC to take each function uh, in a separate, in a separate uh, ELF section, which permits it uh, to uh, recursively prune all unused functions uh, at link time, which uh, results in pretty small binaries. So here's a table uh, which shows on the... Uh, uh, those are few quite basic uh, standard Arduino examples. And uh, here are uh, code size for original Arduinos for RISC V. Uh, those are code sizes for the same CPU core, but uh, when synthesized for executing uh, the MIPS ISA. And we can see that those are more or less uh, the same in size. And uh, the newer Arduinos are probably plagued by, uh, I don't know what, uh, huge uh, startup libraries. Uh, but in any case, uh, the 32-bit Arduino uh, binaries and Intel Galileo binaries are quite huge. But it's obvious that the, the real code is lost somewhere in, in the noise here. Uh, so uh, the, the other part that has to be extended is the board stakes part, which defines uh, the rules uh, which are observable in the graphical user interface, uh, which, which can be really uh, quite rich. Uh, we can sp here specify the amount of memory, the, the CPU clock rate, uh, we can, uh, at the number one, we specify which ISA the CPU will execute, and so on and so on. And the nice thing is, is if it's done properly, it will really show up in the, in the user interface and be applied to, uh, to the compiled binary. Uh, the other parts are uh, capability of using open OCD and similar tools uh, for uploading pre-built binary, uh, pre-built uh, FPGA bit streams to several C, uh, several FPGA boards that we uh, are kind of supporting. This works mostly on Linux. Some of those work on Windows and on OS X. Uh, this works only for our own uh, FPGA board. Uh, and here's the the the. Uh, final part, the, the bridge between software and hardware. Uh, we leverage uh, object copy uh, part of the GNU toolchain to uh, transform the uh, ELF uh, object file into hex, uh, uh, hex format, which can then be directly digested by a bootloader. Uh, more or less, uh, that's it. The, the, the nice thing about all, the, all of this stuff is that it's really simple to uh, uh, get it running. So those five steps listed here are really the only steps that are required to, to get this whole toolchain uh, working on any oper supported operating system. So just install the stock Arduino, pull a few uh, pull this URL into a boards manager uh, box and click install and you have a completely uh, operational RISC-V and MIPS uh, toolchain uh, ready to use. Uh, 
And that's it. So uh, for those who are, who are interested to see how it works in, in uh, real life, uh, uh, I'll, be, I'll be doing a demo at the poster session. Instead of using uh, already available Berkeley core, we rolled our own core, uh, which basically added uh, RISC-V uh, instruction decoder to uh, already existing MIPS uh, pipeline and uh, includes quite a few usable uh, peripherals. Uh, the appeal of this core is that it's written in a completely portable VHDL, uh, which is free from any, uh, any uh, vendor specific uh, uh, modules, so it can be quite easily ported to uh, numerous FPGA boards. Uh, I think I have to skip this slide, but if anyone wants to talk more about how to port uh, FPGA Arduino to a new board, please uh, uh, find me at the poster section. So uh, here's a list of just a few boards that we are uh, supporting. Uh, it's more or less, I think, 15 of them, and I think uh, there are at least uh, as many so uh, from uh, less known FPGA board vendors which uh, are maintaining them themselves. So uh, that's it. Uh, here are the pointers. If you want to try this out, uh, come see me at the poster section and, uh, well, if there's any question, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Great. Thanks, Marco. <laughs> Any questions for Marco? Um, just one question. Um, you are currently focusing, I think, on the software ecosystem for uh, making the FPGA Arduino work. Um, any thoughts about also making the peripherals, uh, the FPGA image, more flexible in um, the same philosophy as Arduino is doing? Uh, I haven't really thought about how, I mean, the, the uh, components are uh, already available at the GitHub and are quite well integrated in a, in a single top level which one has to uh, instantiate uh, when porting on a new board. So uh, uh, the, most of the peripherals are uh, parameterized, so uh, depending on, I mean, how big you have a RAM interface, uh, well, th those things can be adjusted, but I'm not sure if that was your question. Yeah, that is in, indeed, but uh, probably for the yeah, non less technical enthusiasts, it would be nice to integrate that in some kind of graphical environment, probably. Uh, uh, that, yeah. But that's, that's nice future work, maybe, uh, to do. Uh, I think guys at Trends Electronic in Germany are, are, are working exactly on what, what's, what you're saying. So graphical interface which, uh, well, allows one to compile a, a few modules together in a functional system. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you.